Hey friends, I'm Tyler. Welcome back to my channel. And yeah, we're in a we're in a bit of a different world than we were <laughs> when I released the last video. Things have gotten pretty crazy. We have a whole pandemic going on. You know, a lot of people are homesick. I was sick for a week and a half with the thing that's going around. I don't really want to name it. But yeah, it's really nasty. And please, for the love of God, make sure you're social distancing. I was very, very close to being in the hospital. So please be responsible and don't treat this as a hoax because it's not. And you're stupid if you think it is. But yeah, I figured with everyone home, this would be a really good time to do another searching shutter. This time would be a bit of a quarantine edition. And also this time, things would be a little different because I'm not going to review a film that I've never seen before. I'm just going to look through shutter and make some recommendations because I feel like everyone needs recommendations right now. <laughs> so yeah, and before I even get in into this, if you don't have Shutter, they always have free trials going on and it is like $4.99 a month. It's extremely cheap. I think if you do the annual plan, it works out to $3.99 a month. It's amazing. I pretty much pay for it in October and then just forget about it for the rest of the year. It's great. And yeah, let's uh, let's just get into this. And yes, my hair is absolutely out of control. I cannot help it. I'm growing it out. And this is the first time I haven't styled it for the James Bond section. So <laughs> this is its actual length now. So first off, right off the bat, you got to see they've added some absolute classics. First off, we have The Exorcist, which I'm sure most people have seen. But if you haven't, you just you have to. This looks to be the original version, not the version you've never seen before. This movie is absolutely amazing. I cannot recommend it enough, but I also understand that most people likely will have seen this, so it's like kind of a half recommendation. <laughs> I can't not recommend this, especially with the recent passing of Max von Sydow, because his role in this and his performance is just amazing. As a kid, you you see it and you're like, wait, why, is, why are we with someone that's not the the girl that's possessed and then you realize like oh this is Max von Sydow's movie like it's it's all him it's really cool seeing his performance the even crazier thing is that he's like an old man makeup in this he's not as old as he looks in this but like since this is what he looks like later in life I just always have this idea in my head of this being what Max von Sydow looks like but then we got to skip to we're not gonna talk about Exorcist 2 that's not that's considered just a shitty one the Exorcist 3 I've always heard amazing things about it so I knew I had to check it out and yeah it's it's amazing like it's so good a cop investigates brutal murder similar to ones committed by a long dead serial killer but the decapitations and crucifixions couldn't be the work of the Gemini killer or could they after his priest is butchered in a hospital lieutenant Kinderman traces the clues to the psych ward where a patient claims to be Damien Karras the priest who died during the final moments in the exorcist I'm just now realizing that that's even <laughs> I didn't even realize that this <laughs> I I've watched this movie multiple times and I'm just now realizing this is a thing that happens. <laughs> okay, I'm an idiot. I'm yep, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Next up, we've got this Cursed Films. This is a TV show. I it looks like they only have the one episode released, but ooh, right on brand. It's about controversy surrounding The Exorcist. This one I feel like would be very very interesting just because it's more about the reaction that filmgoers had because people like legitimately thought this the film prints were like possessed by Satan, <laughs> like all this ridiculous stuff because there was people that were like passing out and fainting at these screenings. That's why it's considered like the scariest movie ever made. But this one would be really interesting. I know that on this series, they're gonna go over the Poltergeist series, which yeah, that is all just depressing. But The Exorcist 1 looks like it's like actually a lot of fun. Oh, good old Shudder. Though I will say, a little bit of a side rant. What is it with Friday the 13th hardly ever being on streaming services during actual Friday the 13th? I'm sure it has something to do with the fact that like rights are more expensive during that period of time, but it happens all the time. I can probably count on one hand the number of times that a Friday the 13th has come where the Friday the 13th films are actually still up on Netflix or Amazon Prime, or in this case, Shudder. They are almost always, if they were on there, they get taken down just before fucking Friday the 13th. So I don't know what the surcharge is for that series on that holiday, but it must be insane. Because even this, uh, Friday the 13th was last month, and this was obviously, we didn't have those. And now, we got it here. So, we have 
all the way up to part eight. This is the, for those unaware, this is the Paramount era. After this, the rights went to New Line, and that's when we're into the, like the Jason Goes to Hell, Jason X, Friday versus Jason and remake era, which is still fine. It's, I still enjoy those era, but this is like, this is prime Friday the 13th. So if you've never seen a Friday the 13th before, like this is the perfect time to do that because you're able to binge the first eight which again, that is, that really just cements all the classic Jason tropes. I wouldn't go as far as to say that you don't need to see the New Line era, but if you could only watch one era, this would be the era to watch because yeah, it's just amazing. And speaking of which, does that mean, ah, and see, I was gonna tell you guys that, look, you could watch the big three, but it appears the Nightmare on Elm Street series was not on here for very long. I think they added it in February, maybe? Might have been earlier than that, but it was, it's already gone. That's crazy. Uh, I don't, should I go through the newer stuff? I don't know. Trying to make recommendation. Ooh, okay. This is a movie that I'm sure not as many people have seen because it's PG-13 Johnny Depp film from 2004. I'll put this out there right now. This movie does really suffer from that like mid 2000s syndrome of just weird editing choices and overly using music cues to like convey what's going on on screen like it gets a little ridiculous at that but yeah this is based on a Stephen King short story and it's just it's amazing it's honestly one of those films that I'm kind of shocked that with the resurgence of Stephen King short stories being like made into films that this one hasn't been looked at to remake because it's very simple like you can make this on such a small budget but you also run into the issue of the twist being kind of like you know, not too surprising in this day and age. Yeah, let's take a look at some of the other. Oh yeah, Ginger Snaps. They make the werewolf, like turning into a werewolf, a metaphor for getting your period and going through womanly changes. And so it's one of the smarter werewolf films I think that has ever been. Well, and not to mention just between Emily Perkins and Catherine Isabel and Chris Lemke, you just have a fantastic cast. God. This movie's 20 years old. <laughs> oh my God, I feel so old now. Holy shit. It's a really good movie. It's, you know, indie from 2000, so it certainly looks like it. <laughs> if you can get past that, it's absolutely amazing and worth a watch. Now, you may not be able to watch, <laughs> watch any Freddy exploits in this, but you can definitely watch some Michael Myers. I really want to know what AMC's deal is with these films because ever since I was in middle school, these have shown on AMC. And ever since I've had Shudder for the last two years now, these have not left the service. Like, these are staples. And so, especially with, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street was here for like two months and then gone. That happens fairly regularly with these films. Like some of the bigger ones, they'll just kind of get them in and then they'll be out. Like the Friday the 13th films, they'll they'll be gone without a doubt. I'm sure that the reason they're in here right now is to get people excited for the new Blu-ray set that's supposed to be coming out this summer slash fall that is going to feature all 12 films because the other one went out of print and it was a ugly tin box anyway, which is why I didn't get it. But yeah, I'm sure that's why these are on, but I'm not sure why these ones are constantly on, but I'm glad they are. They're absolutely amazing. I love these movies. Four and five, obviously, like it's an acquired taste, five in particular, but they're such fun films that just, they take me back. I'll just go over a couple more. I've gone over such basic ones. <laughs> But I just wanted, I wanted to make sure, because this is mostly for people that it's like, oh, wow, I don't have Shudder. That would be awesome to get. Uh, anything in this? Oh, yeah, Audition. This is a, oh, they even have a thing called Shut In. Great. <laughs> that is actually why I was going to recommend Audition, because I feel like it fits with the times of being stuck in a room. <laughs> Obviously, it goes even more insane, but gotta talk about, this is like not quite as horror, but it's directed by John Carpenter, so I love 80s John Carpenter. 80s John Carpenter is... 
And you know what? For my last recommendation, because I don't know how long this is and I don't want to make it overly long. Now, <laughs> I'm not going to say specifically the Christmas one, but this is just the first one that I saw. This is uh, Joe Bob's last drive-in. He's This is one of the specials, the Christmas special. He also did a Thanksgiving special and I think like a 4th of July special, something like that. Oh yeah, here we go. Much better look out. So we had the Halloween Hoot Nanny, which has... I believe it's the Halloween films that we had just discussed. But yeah, then you got the Joe Bob's Red Christmas, which we just looked at. The Dinners of Death, which I think has like Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Hills Have Eyes, Blood Rage. And it's also just a really cool way to be able to watch these films because you get a little like break with Joe Bob, which is awesome. But yeah, that's really all. Hope that you guys enjoyed. I hope you find something on Shutter that can help you get through this pandemic, you know, all that good stuff. And yeah, uh, I don't really have much else to say. Thanks for letting me ramble and recommend. Usually this uh, searching shutter is just me trying to find new films. So it's nice to be able to talk about stuff that I actually, you know, know about well. But yeah, that's really all. I will see you in the next video. Oh, and a little bit of housekeeping while we do this little outro that I usually do. So if you notice in my James Bond thing, when I, for the outros, because it doesn't have, you know, you know, it's a little video recommended and the subscribe that's like not there. It's because I changed the aspect ratio to match the films. And apparently when you get too widescreen, it won't let you do that. So yeah, now I know. Oh, and James Bond will return soon. Maybe next week. <laughs>